Hello! I thought I would do some reviews on the floor today, just because I am special. <laughs> um, this is something you're not going to read about in any photography magazine, and you won't find it on anybody's YouTube channel, and it's important. Talking about the discriminating factors that make up a good camera, empirically, their primary characteristic that everybody should be looking at, but most people don't. Everybody, we're talking about lenses and cameras here. Everybody looks at high ISO performance. Well, here's a fact that uh, silicon uh, sensor technology that is in your camera, I don't care if it's made by Toshiba or Sensor or Renesas, there's actually a couple more that actually make uh, digital uh, sensors for uh, digital cameras, DSLRs, uh, point and shits, that's what I call them anyway, and, <laughs> and mirrorless like the uh, much beloved Fuji X-T1 here, not referring to any specific camera. Love you, by the way. Uh, <laughs> um, there is limitations on that sensor technology. And like the Nikon D5, for example, that is not the sensor. That is 80 converters, SNR firmware. It is signal processing. See, ISO and a lot of people don't know this. They think ISO has something to do with exposure. ISO has nothing to do with exposure, nothing to do with light, okay? And it has nothing, not a damn thing to do with sensitivity. Nothing to do with light, exposure, sensitivity, period. Flat out, undeniable, case closed. You got nothing to say about it. So judging a camera based upon ISO performance, low or high, doesn't mean a damn thing as far as the performance of the camera. Well. It is the case that if you're a nighttime shooter, you want to shoot, uh, you know, pictures of, uh, you know, uh, you know, black cats in the middle of the night, you know, a dark alleyway. High ISO performance is an important factor. In the case of an ISO invariant sensor, where you could actually push it and post, it doesn't really matter, does it? What matters is is pixel pitch and how a camera, whether uh, what the channel is on the 80 converter and uh, the SNR firmware, and uh, by, by the way, a lot of that noise can be removed in post, far, far better than it can ever be removed out of any camera. Where cameras lift their shirts, or lift their skirts, if you will, to show you whether or not they have STDs, analogously, is in shadows, okay? I don't give a damn what camera you got. What is this camera, any camera? where a camera lifts its skirt to show you whether or not it has a venereal disease is in shadows. Typically two, three, four stops between what you've exposed for, whether that's the mid-tones or a highlight and then you opened up two more stops. It doesn't matter whether you uh, spot metered it, matrix metered it, P mode as I would call it, where cameras lift their skirts and show you what the hell they're made out of is not an ISO. However, ISO performance obviously is important to certain photographers. Low light, night, club, scene. You can do 95% of that in Lightroom. You can. It's undeniable. You can, especially on an ISO invariant sensor. Where cameras show you what the hell they're made of is in shadow, noise, and a lot of time, like the Nikon um, uh, D7200, uh, it actually changed, since it used the exact same sensor as the Nikon D7100, what they did is they shifted everything around, not on the sensor, since it's the same sensor. The ISO, uh, the D7100, a uh, high ISO, has some banding issues. Way the hell up there where nobody would ever use it. Most people would never use it. It's like, okay, well, let's solve that. Well, they just shifted the spectrum of how the D72 operates. So the D7200 has the inverse issue. The D7200 has low, IS, low ISO shadow issues. D7100 never had that issue. D7200 does have that issue. That's an example. See, silicon sensor technology is silicon sensor technology. It is There's nobody really saying of the four or five uh, sensor manufacturers that one of them is just making turd bunnies. They're just not, because there's billions of dollars involved. And uh, while Nikon and Canon and Sony will roll out crappy cameras, as far as crappy sensor technology in the past eight years, it ain't rolling out. But what does happen is, is that everything behind the sensor, as far as what's changed in the 80 converter and SNR firmware, 
can be shifted one way or the other and make you think you're getting a new camera. See, the Nikon D750 I'm filming this on using the same damn sensor in the Nikon D610. D750 has a uh, really good high ISO performance. It's the same damn sensor. Nothing to do with the sensor. It has everything to do with the signal processing. Where every camera will tell you what it's made out of is in... See, it's just doesn't matter whether it's low ISO or high ISO, where every camera will tell you whether it's crap or gold, and none of them are really totally crap, some of them are, is in shadow detail. Noise, banding, uh, all sorts of issues that occur in the shadows. So forget about high ISO and judging a camera. That's not important. It's not. Where lenses lift their skirts, you know, you can take a crappy lens like an f4.5 lens and say, well, it's great at f8, and but well, it doesn't mean anything. The same thing applies to lenses, where lenses lift their skirts and go, wah, and tell you whether they got STDs or not, is wide open. Where you want to judge an f1.4 lens is not at f4, f5.6, f8, but at f1.4. That will tell you what the hell's... Here's a perfect example. Nikon 24mm f1.8 G Nikkor. Great lens, 750 bucks basically. I got it. Okay? Now, that's a 1.8. Now, the 1.4, not much more wide open. 18, 1.4. 1.8, 1.4. The 1.4 is a lot more money. And what are you getting for that? Well, A, you're not getting much. You're not really getting much at all. Well, sure you are. You know, it's, uh, it's a 1.4. It's a big old lens. It looks sexy! Yeah, but do you know how that lens performs at f1.4? Ah! That tells you something. That means that you're paying a lot for nothing. Nikon knows it. Canon does that. Nikon does it. Everybody does it. Makes lenses. Can't deny it. Can't deny it. You're spending a lot of money for very little more. Almost nothing more. But worse still, it doesn't perform well at f1.4. It's like, well, it performs great at f1.8. Well, that's great! Why the hell didn't you just buy an f1.8 then? Damn it. So, where you want to judge a camera at any ISO is shadow performance, given proper exposure, of course. Or on an ISO invariant sensor, not given proper exposure. You're going to underexpose like four stops? You're going to push it? Yeah, let's see how it performs in the shadows there. I don't care what the high ISO performance or low ISO performance of a camera is. If I can fix it in post, it's not a big issue. If, however, the information isn't processed properly, and you have shadow issues, remember the zone system of Ansel Adams? You know? Those first four or five stops where all the important stuff is? If the camera performs bad in the shadows, that is how you judge a camera. That is how any real professional who knows what the hell a camera does and how it works. See? Understand that. And nobody understands that. Nobody talks about it. Most people don't even know anything about it. So, anyway, consider that, and I'll catch you later.